there, I'm Tyler Pollard, and you're here on Timeline, uh, speaking with LA-based singer-songwriter Lady Mandel, who's out tirelessly promoting her new album, Artificial Fire. I was drawing a map, but I couldn't have known. Take a right, take a left, you know when you get there. The puzzle will fit late one night, Montreal, with his clothes on the floor and his artificial Today we're going to talk about uh, one of these early starts with music. Um, maybe if you can kind of get us started with the first time you remember being affected by music and then kind of walk us through okay. different stages of how it grabbed hold a little tighter okay. and some of the things that you've brought along your way to, to make your music today. Wow. You know, as concisely <laughs> as possible. Yeah. Well, I started playing music when I was five, mm -hmm. loved violin, and then later a little, a little bit later piano. Didn't really love those instruments, but yeah. music's always been a big part of my life. My dad was sort of a record collector, always buying new music. So he exposed me to all kinds of different stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't really give much thought to at the time. I'm not sure if it was, you know, Diana Ross from Mahogany's record, <laughs> uh, the movie Mahogany, or if it was the Beatles, but, you know, pretty early on I was staring at record covers and dancing around the living room by myself, mm -hmm. singing into the mirror. And being forced to play piano. And, yeah, and, and trying to figure out how on earth I was going to write songs and sing, playing the violin. Mm -hmm. I kind of had that thought already when I was pretty young. And then, uh, 13 years old, my mom finally let me quit playing those instruments. And two years later, I started, I rented a guitar. I actually, around 13 years old, I also discovered the band X. Uh -huh. And they were the band that really, uh, I guess, really changed my life. Mm -hmm. I thought, that's what I want to do. I'd never heard anything like it before. They're a local LA punk band, you know, pretty huge yeah. in LA. And I think they obviously have, they have an international career, but in LA, they were huge. Yeah. And um, so I rented a guitar and started playing songs kind of making stuff up, trying to get a band together, trying for years, yeah. you know, in college also. And then a couple years after I discovered X, I discovered Tom Waits' music, and then I thought, oh, I could do this alone. Right. I don't actually need other people to make it possible. Because were you trying to write songs with those early bands, or were you just trying to play covers to kind of just um, get doing it? I had it? written some pretty dorky songs mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I don't know I hadn't really given it much thought and I hadn't I didn't actually at that point want to be a musician my guitar teacher used to always say why don't you be a musician I'd, I'd be like no way he was it was sweet of him to encourage me and I think I was smarter than <laughs> than I turned out to be so you, you got the ex influence and she got yeah. you thinking about it you know and she's definitely a, a great character to kind of identify Exine. with yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, truth be told, I, I really didn't have a whole lot of experience with X, and I, mm -hmm. I just did a little re-listening coming mm -hmm. to meet with you, and uh, they're fantastic, and I do yeah. hear a lot of her influence in you, which is yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, she's not the melodic one in the band. John Doe's really the melodic one. Right. But she, she had a huge influence on me, fashion-wise. I mean, she was this sort of punk rock icon, mm -hmm. and um, just uh, lyrically also kind of grabbing things from all parts of life and putting them into songs. It's definitely heavily influenced by her, by her and, and the band and then, you know, and then Tom Waits. Right. And uh, there's also, you you put them out there and uh, I listened to some Hoagie Carmichael uh -huh. as well. Yeah. And I don't think that that's that random of a comparison. I do yeah. think that you kind of operate on the same uh, American yeah. songwriting, which is, uh, I never would have I never would have yeah. guessed. But. And I think that's actually, I can credit both my parents because my mother was always taking us to see musicals mm -hmm. as kids and listening to those records. And then my dad was really into jazz standards and all of the classics, Gershwin, Cole Porter, yep. uh, Hoagie Carmichael. So I had all of that stuff so deeply embedded in me, mm -hmm. I kind of take it for granted. You've also been kind of called a, a vocal actress in a way, <laughs> um, which is an interesting I like thing. that. Yeah, I, and I, I do think that that's kind of a, uh, a good good thing to say too because you that is a big part of your music is the acting out of the, the characters and the yeah. emotions and uh, would you would you suppose that's tied into your California upbringing too well I did want to be an actress yeah that was sort of my first career idea mm -hmm. lame <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, 
but I, I always say I'm not a perfect singer, but I'm an emotional singer, and I think that's where I, I have an impact where maybe other people don't. I don't, I'm not sure, but... I would say that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, L.A. had a big impact on me growing up there and living there still, but, um, but I don't know about as far as what kind of singer I am. I think right. what kind of person I am. Yeah. But I think that's it's kind of the landscapes of your writing too is fairly yeah. representative of Cal the California perspective. Yeah, um, but like the dark, twisted, yeah, sad, the sad part of part. California. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the new album is concerned, I, I do think I hear so many of those pieces of patchwork. You know, yeah. um, uh, there's one song uh, I, I even kind of felt a little Linda Ronstadt. Really? Um, I did. Um, towards the end. <laughs> towards the end of the, the record, end. it's. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I I don't. I'm definitely a different kind of singer than she is. She was a real belter. Yeah, but there was the the sweet, the sweet side of her harmony when she yeah. did kind of delve into the harmonies. And there's a lot of harmonies on your record uh, this yeah. time around. Are there other um, things that you were trying to incorporate into this new album that I might not have picked up on that you thought were important to get in? I knew that I wanted to have more fun. Yeah. I wanted to dance. And what I've been doing is the, the teenage part comes in with the electric guitar, my first guitar that I owned was electric. Literally, it's like the one you're playing with. No, no, no. Oh, okay. But it's the one I played on the record yeah. that I got for my 16th birthday from my parents. That's pretty special. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'd been listening to a lot of um, other music from my childhood besides X and Tom Waits, like The Cars and Adam and the Ants and Joan Jett and Little Rick English B. I actually do like Jesse's Girl. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a great song. And I was just having tons of dance parties and tons of fun, and I thought a little bit about how music can make people really happy, and I wanted to tap a little bit more into that. I still have a little dark darkness, but... But it's always a little hidden, and I, I yeah. think that's what's funny about the new album is that people are saying it's, it's a brighter Eleni, it's more yeah. positive, and I don't think it's that noticeably. I think that yeah, it's, no. it's the same as always, um, but there is a vibrancy to the record, which yeah. I do think comes from some of the stuff the band's doing. Absolutely. Um, it's really great. Um, so let's talk about maybe um, some early memories. Like what, uh, what was your first concert that you went to? Boingo, Boingo. Boingo, Boingo. Not because I was a big fan, because my friend's dad got us free tickets. Free tickets. <laughs> Halloween show. How about first record you bought? X. X. Okay. Yeah, Los so Angeles. I, well, my dad bought me X Los Angeles, and the first record I personally bought was Under the Big Black Sun. Under the what? Big Black Sun. Oh, okay. And I think it's their third record. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. And uh, by the way, DJ Bonebreak from X is filling in on drums for me now, I was so it's ask, kind of bringing not... it all full circle. Right, right. <laughs> um, another thing that I'm going to throw out there is that I also did a little listening to Chucky e. Weiss, which is somebody who yes. you mentioned as, a, as an influence in yeah. some capacity. Um, I use my mentor. Your mentor. I mean, really, I. All of those pieces of music, you know, those were all important to have, but I feel like without Chuck taking me by the hand and saying, you're good at this, you should do this, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd be doing it. I, I absolutely do, because that <laughs> kind of yet unlocked an, another facet of your music that I had never heard until I heard Chucky, which yeah. was, you know, there's a lot of rhythmic um, comparisons there as mm -hmm. far as, um, you know, he may kind of attribute a lot of his you know, influence to Tom Waits, I think he took that and added a lot more uh, danceable rhythms to yeah. it, which I But actually, Tom and Chuck are, were best friends, and they came up at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think Tom might actually credit Chuck as more of an influence than vice versa. Really? I mean, they're similar, they're yeah. friends, but yeah. I mean, as far as the stories I've heard, you know, maybe, I mean, in some ways that wouldn't be fair to say, but in a lot of ways I think it would be fair. Chuck was sort of a muse to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he was the character that, he's sort of the Neil Cassidy to Tom Waits's, uh, what's his name? <laughs> that, <laughs> that guy. guy. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, but the, Jack Kerouac. Jack Kerouac. The, uh, the thing about Chuck, too, is that I, I learned that he did a little time with Willie Dixon when he was a kid. Yeah. And I heard Willie Dixon in a lot of Chuck's music, which yeah. I think is yeah. pretty cool. Cause that's, yeah, Chuck played drums for Willie Dixon yeah. when he was really young. and hung out with Dr. John, they were friends, and Kinky Friedman, and so many. I mean, Chuck's the guy with all the stories. Mm -hmm. you know. But I, it, I do think that you're, you know, you walk the, the line of not trying to incorporate too many influences in an obvious manner, but I do think that 
you use a lot in your trick bag to kind of do what you need to do for the emotion of your songs. Yeah. Um, and that's well, really I mean, there's really no getting away from it. Yeah. At this point, I feel like it's pretty unconscious and that my main goal is to let go of the influences and try to be as much myself as possible. Yeah. And playing with Ryan and Jeremy and Kevin and also DJ, I mean, they, they bring so much to the table as well that I don't... I don't know. No, it, it, it becomes its own thing. I can't even control it. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're they're an exciting band, and like you can hear yeah. it with everything that you're doing. Yeah. And, um, that you've always had exciting bands, but there's just something sneaking yeah. out in all the right areas. Yeah. Well, this is much more of a band. I feel like band effort. I'm a hybrid. I'm not really a singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a band. Uh, so I, I guess I want to thank you for yeah. stopping by and talking to us on timeline. Real pleasure. Uh, Eleni's going to be out on the road for the next few weeks, another couple months, ending up in Germany. Um, yeah. Long road ahead and uh, <laughs> yes. lots of people to make happy. And uh, best of luck to you and thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. You're watching Timeline on PlusOneTV.com.